Church friends. How are you? I'm so excited to be with you here at PJ Church. Well, you know, it's the second week of February and it's time for one of my favorite holidays. And I'm all dressed up for my favorite holiday here and I'm all dressed up for Valentine's Day. Right? No? What? <sighs> Things have gone wrong again. I'm not, it's not, I'm dressed for Chris. I'm going crazy around here, guys. Things are all mixed up and the opposite of what they should be. I don't even know what to do anymore. You need to stick with me. You need to help me out. But before we get into our very important learning, we're going to play a little game. We are going to play a game called How Many Times? Simple, really. I'm going to tell you to do something and you need to see how many times you can do it in 15 seconds. Sounds simple enough? I tell you to do something, you see how many times you can do it. Are you ready? All right, first thing, how many times in 15 seconds can you touch your shoulder? Ready, go. How many times? How many times did you do it? That is a lot of times. All right, ready for the next ones? How many times or how many jumping jacks can you do? How many jumping jacks? Are you ready? Go. Stop. How many? You got you got 65? No way you did 65 jumping jacks. For reals? That's impressive. Very impressive. Okay, you ready for the next one? How many times can you run to your bedroom and back? Are you ready? Run to your bedroom and back and go! How many times did you make it? Five? Six? Oh, you are very fast. Okay, and here is your very last one. How many times can you hug a friend? Go find a friend and give them so many hugs. As many hugs as you can. Hug, 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 hug. <sighs> good job. Thank you guys. You were very good at doing things lots of times and quickly. All right, let's get into our very important learning. <laughs> He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples were there and a great number of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because the power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. And woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. And woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when men speak well of you, for that is how their fa the fathers treated the false prophets. Whoa, these are some pretty confusing words from Jesus, aren't they? Jesus says, if you're hurting now, you're blessed. If you're hungry now, you're blessed. What? This, this is crazy talk. This is the opposite of opposite of opposite talk. This does not make sense at all. But the thing is, what Jesus is saying is all the stuff of this world might satisfy us now, but it's not forever. It's not eternal. And this teaching brings us to our very first point. Our big idea today is that our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. Hi there, you little turkey nuggets. It's me, Carl. Get it? Because turkeys are the opposite of chickens, so... 
Welcome to Opposite Day. Welcome to Grow T and Eight. Welcome to Grow T. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow T. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Grow TV. Man, have I missed you. Y'all remember last week, me and my friend Andy, we read a story in the Bible that completely turned our lives around. And we decided we're gonna live our lives opposite of how we normally do. So let me give you an update. Instead of sleeping at night, I've been staying up all night and sleeping during the day. Instead of eating my normal cereal in the morning, I've been eating steak and potatoes with a, with a gravy smoothie. Oh, and get this, instead of taking naps in the afternoon, I started playing sports. Like football, basketball, baseball, and extreme ironing. Like ironing clothes, but on the sides of mountains. It's a real thing, look it up. Not gonna lie, y'all, this has been the best thing ever. Living my life the opposite of how I normally do, it's been so cool. Let's call my buddy Andy in here and see how he's been doing with the whole thing. Andy! Andy, get in there! Andy! Andy! You, Andy! Andy, get me here! Andy! Hi, Andy! Andy! What do you want? I'm, I'm sorry, I think I, um... I have the wrong number. No, Carl, wait. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just not having the greatest time with the whole opposite day thing. Oh no, what happened? Well, it was going fine the first couple days, right? I was doing what we're supposed to do, the opposite of what we always do. And then it went south. Really? How? Well, I always show up to places on time, right? So I decided to be late everywhere I go. And now people are annoyed at me. Oh, I see. And I usually don't spend a lot of money, but now <laughs> I am. And now, I don't think I have enough money for things that I need, like food. Oh wow, that stinks. It really does, and I always walk forward when I'm going places, but I decided, hey, you know what, let's mix it up, opposite day, right? So I started walking backwards, and then guess what happened? What? I walked right into a sewer drain. A sewer drain? I thought that stuff only happened in the movies. Yeah, well apparently not. I fell into one, a sewer drain. And now, I'm covered in a stank you wouldn't believe. This hoodie was white earlier today, okay? Oh, that's what that smell is. I was just joking, I'm sorry. It's fine, I just, it's just a big bummer. I just wish, Never mind. No, what? I just don't know how I'm supposed to get closer to Jesus when I keep having these problems. Huh, I guess I never thought about it like that. But you know what, Andy? I think there's some scripture that might give you a new perspiration. Perspective? Gazunta. Well, look at the book of Luke, chapter six. Okay. Wait, I, I think I've read this scripture before. Probably have, it's pretty popular. But this scripture is about people from all over the land coming to see Jesus teach. Yeah, I don't know about you, but teaching in front of that many people is the opposite of what I would wanna do. Right, I'd be really nervous, but Jesus had an important message. What did he say? Well, we started off with this. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Wait a minute, did Jesus just say the poor are blessed? Yep. And that the people that are hungry are also blessed? You got it. And those who are weeping are also blessed? Yes. <laughs> yep, isn't that great? Like that doesn't make sense. I'm so hungry right now, I think I might cry. Does that mean I'm blessed? Well, I think I need to explain. Please. See, Jesus was surrounded by people who were also struggling. Some were sick, some were poor, some were even dying. So Jesus, he was encouraging them. Encouraging them? Yeah, he was sharing the hope that he had. Well, he was inviting people who struggled with different things to come to him and bring them before God. It's easy to forget about God when everything's going great. It's unfortunate, but true. But when things are going wrong, what's the first thing you do? Scream. And then? I pray. Exactly, that's what Jesus was telling the people. Even though their lives may have been rough, they were blessed because every struggle was an opportunity to turn to Jesus. Their struggles would bring them closer to Jesus? They sure would, and that goes for you too. Wait, really? I think the Son of God is able to use anything, even struggles, to bring others closer to Him. Wow, I, I guess you're right. Hey. 
Hey there kids, what an awesome story today, right? Now our great big idea today is our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. And this time, let's do something opposite of what we normally do. So Andy and Carl are going to help me say the big idea in as many ways as they can in 30 seconds. Follow along, ready? One, two, three. Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. <laughs> Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. 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 Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. Ah, touchdown. Our struggles bring us closer to Jesus. 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 Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Well guys, it's still opposite day here at PJ Church. I'm still definitely, definitely at the Warong holiday. I don't know, maybe next week it will be a little less crazy. But I have a few questions for you and here's your first one. Today we're talking about how our struggles bring us closer to Jesus, right? Here's our first question is, what are some struggles going on in our world right now? Maybe in your life personally or just in our world in general? Any ideas, what are some struggles? Maybe you're struggling at school. Maybe reading is real hard and you have to work really hard to get the hang of it. It happens. Maybe you're struggling at sports. Maybe you gotta work real hard and train real hard. Maybe you're struggling to get along with your brother or sister. And then we know the one thing we're all struggling with right now is maybe COVID stuff. You're sick of wearing a mask and maybe you've been isolating, you're stuck in your house. Maybe someone you know has been really, really sick and that can be very scary. So these are all struggles that we're going through right now. But what are some ways that these struggles have brought us closer to Jesus? Any guesses? Well, when we think about isolating and with COVID, maybe you've got to spend extra time with your family and that's so exciting. Maybe you've been so busy before running here, running there, and now you've had time to sit down and do a games night instead of rushing off to some activity. That's a really cool way that's blessing. Maybe you all sit together on the couch and give a, give a snuggle and curl up under a blanket and watch PJ Church together. And as a family, you grow closer to Jesus, even in these times of struggle. Those are awesome answers. Can you think of any others? Fantastic, great job. So we're gonna pray and then I'll see you again next week and maybe I can get the craziness figured out around here. <laughs> are you ready? Let's pray. So dear Jesus, we thank you that you help us. We thank you that you turn rotten situations around for good. We thank you, God, that you've been doing that since the very, very beginning, using the bad things in our lives and flipping them around for good things. We love you. Thanks for loving us. Amen. What do you call the world's smallest Valentine's card? A Valentini! What did one sheep say to the other? I love you. And how did the other sheep respond? You're not so bad yourself. And what did the teenager give her mom? Uh, this, uh, and kisses.